Welcome to Straight Out of Savannah, Talking with Tammy, a podcast that showcases people you may not know who are choosing to use their gifts to inspire and move the planet. joining us on Straight Out of Savannah. My guest, Allie Arney, is with me, and I am super excited that she's come to join me. So, Allie, share with the people who you are and where you are going. Sure. So, I'm Allie. I have been in Nashville for the last, I don't know, 17, 18 years, and I am an HR professional. I have my own consulting business focused on career strategy and interview preparation, resume writing, things like that. And it's a, my way to help build people's confidence in themselves so they can pursue whatever field they desire, whatever dreams they have from a career standpoint. Yes. I also have a homestead, so lots of chickens. Uh, I've got three daughters, a wonderful husband, and a few other business ventures, but they all are, all are just dreams and passions that we've had for a long time that we are excited to pursue and continue to see where those things go and give us options as a family to spend as much time as we can together. Yes, that is perfect. That is perfect. So what brought you to that place where you decided that, you know, you wanted to pursue those ventures and businesses and homestead? Sure. So I was in, well, to back up a little bit, I got a degree in psychology. So I've always been passionate about people and the mind. Um, after graduation, I was going to pursue a master's in psychology, but was snagged by a friend's mom to come help her start an HR company. And so I did that instead. And here I am all these years later, still in HR by accident. So, uh, so that kind of happened by accident, but I was in a recruiting agency. It was very high stress, very fast paced, lots of hours. Um, it was lucrative, but it just wasn't wasn't worth it for my family, for me mm -hmm. to be so tied up with that anymore. Um, and my husband and I had joined a business mentorship type of team that spoke a lot of success principles into us. And they started speaking about the power of the spoken word and, and yes. exciting dreams in us. And so as a family, we sat down and really figured out what our dreams were. And so it was about eight years ago, my husband and I figured out our dream. He grew up farming. I always grew up in near the country, but not in the country per se, and always had yes. a yes. To it. I always wanted to be out in nature and just using what God has given us for herbs and plants and medicine, all of those things. I geek out a little bit over all of that. So, uh, we always wanted the natural life. And so from there, we just, we designed the dream, uh, for Buffalo diamond ranch. And for nice. us, if you don't mind, I'll share what that name means because it yes, really I do. Yes. comes from a place of where our hearts are. So a Buffalo, if you don't know, they will turn and face a storm to get through it quicker oh, okay. where cattle okay. and all other animals, they will run away from the storm, but the storm catches up to them and their, their agony is actually prolonged because they get caught in the storm trying to get away from it. And diamonds, oh, wow. of course, are forged under extreme pressure and heat, right? Um, and something dirty that turns into something beautiful. So this concept of Buffalo Diamond came to us as, as the image of individuals and as a family that we really claim as our identity, because we are Buffalo that will turn and face the storm and we will come out on the other side as beautiful gems oh, nice. for pressure and heat every time. And yes. so it kind of became our family mantra to just keep pushing through things. Um, and so we identified that we wanted a ranch that we would name it Buffalo Diamond Ranch and have this homestead life. Mm -hmm. And since then, all of our businesses have taken on the same name. So I have Buffalo Diamond Consulting. We had oh, nice. uh, a marketing firm for a while. We had some other things too. And so it's always been Buffalo Diamond for us. And so uh, we took the, the power of the spoken word and we, we grew this image and we've been able to able to overcome a lot over the years, probably more than we wanted. <laughs> yeah. It usually but, does work out that way, right? A hundred percent. But <laughs> all of that now, uh, you know, eight years later, we actually bought our property this year. Uh, we were able to buy Buffalo Diamond Ranch. We've got great signs up and that was, uh, that was really exciting for us. So our goal is just to continue to build that life that our family wants and give our kids a a safe haven and, and a place to go. And that mentality can go with them whenever they, 
move on into their own lives. So yes, that is powerful. So you got goats and chickens and ducks and things. <laughs> we have we have a lot of chickens. We have 27 chickens. Um, oh, wow. We have five turkeys and a couple of rabbits. But since we just got started, we don't have the hogs and the cows and the goats yet. That'll be next year. But we're getting all of the pens set up, the garden set up, the greenhouse, everything like that. So oh, that is that's phenomenal. Oh my <laughs> God, I cannot wait. I have to visit. <laughs> yeah. Yes, it's beautiful. It's up in the mountains. So it's a, a beautiful view and rolling hills and lots of greenery. We love it. God, that is amazing. I love how you um, got together as a family and used the spoken word because here's the thing I realized that you know we were created in God's image so that means that we are supposed to be creators and so many times you know we live beneath our means because we are supposed to create you know what we desire using our words and so to me that was like powerful just because you got your family on board with that. Because many times it's like the woman is on board or the man's on board, but you know, never always together and then bring your kids, that's powerful. It's It's gotta be that unity. You know, that's what yes. makes it work. I really believe that. And something that we learned along the way through through all of our reading and all of our studying is that what you put in, you have to protect. So we learned a lot about our sense gates, what you look at, what you listen to, what you speak, what you hear, what you're told, all of those things really play into your ability to believe that you will accomplish what you have set out to do. Yes. And so we, we got to a point, a lot of people called us radical, but it worked. So I guess I'm the one laughing now, but, um, you know, we got to the point where we would not surround ourselves with people who spoke a certain way. We would ask them not to speak to us or not to speak to us about certain topics because we weren't going to hear their negativity. Um, as actually when we got radical was when our middle now middle daughter, then youngest, she was about six, she was learning to read and we, we had family reading time and she was sitting there and I could just kind of tell maybe she wasn't doing quite what she should be doing. So I asked her what the story was about and she started telling me, but as I looked at the book, it wasn't, this wasn't lining up. <laughs> I'm like you're making a story based on the pictures not man that's pictures. awesome <laughs> that's an imagination right <laughs> that she has but I asked her I said why aren't you reading uh what the words say why aren't you reading the story and she said I can't read oh wow and she can she knows how she knew how at that time and but it was a dagger to my mama heart because I knew that someone had told her that she had gotten mm -hmm. from somewhere and so that day we sat down as a family we made a list of words that we don't say can't, don't, um, you know, um, tired, yeah. tired, yeah, <laughs> tired, luck, uh, just a lot of things that we don't, that's not how we believe. Um, yes. And, and we refuse to say that. And so we made a quarter system. We had a, a jar of quarters and an empty jar, and there were $10 worth of quarters in one jar. And every time one of us said try or one of those words that was on our list that we decided not to say, you would have to take that quarter and put it in the other jar. So it became this kind of joke in our family. Oh, that's a quarter. Oh, mom, you said try, that's a quarter. <laughs> oh, that's um, good. And whatever was left in the first jar, we got to spend as a, as a family on a new game or ice cream or whatever at the end of each week. But what we realized as parents is that we really, we were the ones spending the most quarters. <laughs> we, they got on far faster than we did, but it just made us so aware of our speech and it, yes. it bred this level of intentionality into our family. And yes. now, you know, our girls are 16, 13, and now we have a four-year-old as well. And it's amazing to hear them say things like, well, I don't prefer that. Or instead of, I don't want, because that's just not grateful. And so we no. picked, we picked the mindset that we wanted our, our family to have we picked the attitude that we wanted our words to portray and we really got radical with it and it made a huge difference. That is awesome. That is awesome. <laughs> I love to hear that because the thing is, is we have to direct the next generation, you know, because yes. we don't and, and doing it that young. Wow. That means to me, you're setting them up for an amazing life. We hope so. You know, it's fear was one of those things that was on our list as well. So we don't speak the word fear in our household. We don't in any form, uh, afraid, scared, 
of fear. It's <laughs> right. Because like, there's so many words, right? <laughs> so much. I grew up in a very fear-based household where everything was, oh, don't go out after dark because somebody will kidnap you. It was always worst case scenario. And because my parents had experienced some worst case scenarios, that was their mentality. But I grew up really with this fear-based mentality. Everything was was because I was afraid I didn't do so many things. And my husband's the exact opposite. Thank goodness. <laughs> so that was at the top of our list. We have bred fear out of our family and, and yes. it's full of confidence. And it was interesting. Our three-year-old, well, our four-year-old was three at the time. And she, we don't do a lot of TV, but she had watched Moana or something. And she said, what does the word fear mean? And I realized she was four, almost four and didn't know what that word was. And that's so we, amazing. <laughs> it was amazing. And so we explained it. Um, and she said, is that something that I have? Is that something I feel? And we explained, you might think you do, but you have the power to control that. And you yes. can turn that into energy. They're just butterflies telling you you're about to do something great. Yes. And so it's been really interesting. We're not better than by any means, but it's interesting to see how much our kids go and accomplish and do yes. and the family go and do all of these adventures that we get to live because we've taken the negative and the fear out of things and, yes. and claimed our own victories. And we're just really passionate about that. Yes. It sounds like you set not only your yourself free, but your family. hundred percent. It's like you change whatever trajectory it used to be. You changed it. You shifted. And that is, I love to hear that because there's so many people that, like I heard this thing, I was watching this movie and it was um it was something about uh, Katrina. So it was a while ago, but they were talking about this kid was on there and he said something like, he was he couldn't have been more than about 12. I was born here and I'm going to die here. And I thought, whoa, you know, why would you, why? Why, right. why are you at 12 years old talking about you going to die here? Right. You've you know, already who, determined you'll go nowhere. Exactly. And I'm like, wow. And I, it hit me because I thought there are so many people just like that. Mm -hmm. You know, I hear it. You know, my mama was born here and I was born here. My mama died here and I'm going to die here. And I'm like, yeah, that's not even something that I think about. <laughs> <laughs> and if you do at least put it out there that you may come back, but you'll go out first, you know, there, there's so much in the world to see and people to meet and different personalities, yes. and cultures, and so much to live and enjoy, you know, yes, go yes. And first. And if you choose to come back, awesome, but there's yes. no way to set that out. Yes, but, but explore. Yes, exactly. You know, give yourself the option that, you know, if you, you know, like my son wanted to go to California. So he had bought this um, uh, Scooby and Shaggy van. <laughs> <laughs> it really was. It was that Volkswagen van and he fixed it up and kitted it out and put a little bed in it and everything. So he could, could you know, travel across the country and sleep in it. And it was just something he wanted to do. And so he did it. Drove out to California, went out there, you know, worked a little bit, um, different, you know, different things, mm -hmm. um, worked on a pot farm, you know, just different stuff. But it was what something that he wanted to do. And I was so proud of him. You know, a lot of people were like, oh, your son's uh, over going to California and this and that. And, you know, just all this fear. But mm -hmm. I never encouraged fear in my children ever. No, this wasn't something, you know, and I, nobody told me because I was a young, <laughs> nobody told me, but I just felt that. And I was like, I don't want them to feel that, you mm -hmm. know, in that way, you know, and I think, what do you think about a healthy level of fear? What do you think about that? So in our house, we phrase it as respect. Um, okay. We, we like say that. That we fear nothing, but we respect every man in situation. So yes. we understand that there may be dangers. We understand that there may be uh, situations that could cause harm or things that you need to be aware of. We definitely teach having three daughters. We work a lot with situational awareness yes. <laughs> and safety and things of that nature, but we choose to overcome everything with a confidence. So for me, I'm five, one, I'm a fairly petite female. So, <laughs> so, you know, I've lived a lot of my life 
you know, worried about what would happen if I was out too late or if I was here by myself or these things, cause that's what had been bred into me. Yes. And so to overcome that, I, I learned self-defense, um, in a couple different ways. And so now I have, I replaced that fear with a confidence because now I feel confident that I can handle a situation rather than the root of my fear was that I didn't know how to handle myself in that situation. Yes. Yes. So by respecting what can happen, you figure out where the lack of confidence is, and then we yes. choose to overcome and correct by building a confidence in whatever that, that lack is there. Oh man, that's powerful. That is powerful. <laughs> you could teach a class on that alone, especially for kids. Yes. You know, because so many people, I mean, I don't know, you know, I, I don't, I just, I don't know what people are teaching their kids now, you know, cause I'm thinking, Sometimes I see kids and I'm like, he should be able to do that, <laughs> you know, by himself. Right. I mean, I only took my 10 year old to the bathroom with me because he was a little 10, you know, my, I'm five feet tall. <laughs> so my son, he was, he's a little 10, you know, at that time he was a little thing. Cause he was one of those kids that he would grow about every two or three years, like you know, three or four sizes, you know, in two or three years, but then he wouldn't grow any, any, you know, in between. Okay. So that was kind of helpful. But when he was a little 10, so I would take him to the bathroom with me when he was 10, just because, you know, I didn't want any pedophile or anybody to, you know, mess with him in the, in the men's bathroom, you know, but if he was a bigger boy, I might not have taken him in the bathroom with me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But because of, you know, his size, cause he was, you know, he's a, he was a short little thing and he was slim, you know, real slim. So I was like, nah, I'm not having risk in that. You know what I mean? But other than that, it's like, no, you, you, you allow them to, you know, go and do, you know, with some guidance, right? Sure. And there are times I think, especially in children where they have a natural concern, you know, they hit certain developmental leaps and they start to, you know, ew bugs or ew this or ew that. Right? <laughs> yes. And, uh, and, you know, it's not always a popular opinion, but in our house, you try it once. So, you know, if you don't like it after that, that's fine, but you need to see that you can do it. And so, uh, it started with worms for my little one. She was very grossed out by worms and then she was holding them. And now she bug hunts two to three hours of her day every day. So, you know, it's, it's silly little things, but what we're breeding is so cool. (laughs) It's really funny. But when you breed that into them, when they get to that point where they want to travel across country in a Scooby van, they, they will do it because eh, try it once. Let's make sure that we like it. Now, uh, caveat, obviously we put parameters on what we try once, right? Oh yes. <laughs> yes. That's for not sure. everything in life, no, but you know, um, we're not trying, you know, crazy stuff. <laughs> we're not, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I want to do a zip line, you know, but yeah, eventually I'll get my nerve up. <laughs> <laughs> you can do it. I believe in you. <laughs> Ooh, it's like I thought about it, and it's like because I even thought about like skydiving, you know, that kind of stuff. Yep. And then I was like, mm, I don't know, and I've never skied, so I was like, I would like to do that, you know. My husband told me, you know, he'll watch me. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure you get to the bottom. <laughs> He goes, I'll ride up on the thing with you. He goes, and I'll watch you. <laughs> so, you know, he's a little bit older than I am. So he was like, mm mm. <laughs> he said, you know, it's rough. He said, he said, you know, the older you get, it gets rough if you break a hip or, or, or <laughs> so That's one of those said, respect okay. situations. I respect yeah. it just may not yes. turn out well. <laughs> we're gonna put some respect on that and it's okay (laughs) that is so funny oh my god so um in your business Mm -hmm. who is it that you focus on helping or you are I guess you're I don't know do you have an ideal client yeah so my ideal client is someone transitioning careers so whether that is a new industry or, um, you know, maybe they haven't been in the workforce for a little while and trying to get back into that, or maybe just looking for that next promotion, um, moving up in their career, a new direction. I'm here to help those types of people. Um, and majority of the time, what I find in those conversations is that it all boils down to what they're telling themselves and what they've been told and what they're afraid of. And so, um, 
for any of my clients, be prepared to work on yourself a little bit <laughs> because I'm going to recommend some things like that. But I really enjoy helping people identify their strengths and, and just remove that fear blocker and help them see that they can go and do what they want to do. I'm also yes. a straight shooter. If it's not the best path for you to follow first, I will, I will be able to tell you that. But I also, you know, believe that if you want to make a transition 90% of the time, there are skill sets that you can align and make that, yes. but it's yeah. that confidence that you have to commit to. So I'm very passionate about helping people just overcome that. That's awesome. Because the thing is, is you're so right in that with the words, mm -hmm. because you're right. I, the, <laughs> some of the people that I've worked with, it's like the first thing I do is say, hey, you know, what are you saying to yourself about yourself? Right. You know, what are the words that you're speaking to you? Yeah. You no, know, because I, I dove deep into like affirmations and stuff. And, and I, I used to, when I first started, I was like, this is bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> and then I, I said, you know, something in me said, no, just keep doing it, keep doing it, you know, and keep saying and keep speaking, you know. And so I did. And then I started studying um, Neville Goddard and Florence Scovelshin and some of those. And, and I was like, you know what? They are so right. Yeah. And so I started using that and doing, you know, just in my life. And I was like, okay. And of course, when I first started doing it and I was like, it's not working because um, all kinds of stuff started falling off. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, of course, now I know that that is the process. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> <laughs> now, when you start speaking, you know, the word and, and being a creator over your own life and situation and circumstances and stuff, then, you know, stuff just starts falling off that, you know, doesn't serve you anymore. Yeah. But you don't realize that at that time because it just looks like stuff is just being taken from you. <laughs> I'm so glad you mentioned that because it's so true. I think a lot of times with the spoken word and I overcame this too and still work on it, but you think, well, I said it, that's what I want. So that yep. I should get that in entirety tomorrow, but mm -hmm. you're not going to see all of the things that happen in order to get you there. It took us right. eight years to get that farm, multiple houses that we rented, finances that we had to rebudget and rebudget, new jobs that we had to get into and things that we had to get rid of and all of these things. Yes that wasn't quite the direct path that I thought it was going to be. <laughs> you, you didn't quite speak it that way? Not, not quite, you know, um, wasn't that specific. So, <laughs> but it does, it's a process and you hear the phrase all the time, trust the process, but especially with spoken word and affirmations, you're rebuilding something, you're molding your own yes. brain. Neuroplasticity is the, it's the ability for your brain to to yes. reimagine itself and yes. negativity does that positivity does that, but you have the power to change that. And so, especially with affirmations, we're huge on that, Write them. I think the most helpful thing is to write them down, um, figure out what you want to claim for yourself, put it on your mirror and say those affirmations out loud in your mirror every day. Yes. 21 days to create a habit. And I guarantee yes. you by three or four days, you start to feel the difference. And it's, it's your character traits that you want to claim. It's your finances you want to claim. It's your career that you want to claim. Your image. It's my house. Reputation, 100%. <laughs> it's all of those things, but you have to know it's going to not probably be the direct path there. <laughs> right. It's like, but, <laughs> but you, but when you trust the process, then yes. you're trusting and it's okay. You know, it's like, it's okay. Yeah. You know, it's like, well, it's okay. It's like you're, you lean into it. Mm -hmm. You know, and you say, okay, yeah, okay, I can see. And then the other thing I think is best, especially when you first start, is just not to look at stuff so hard. Yes. <laughs> you know, because you, because, you know, you, you're getting away from, you're getting away from um, focusing on the outcome, you know, just holding tight to this outcome. Oh, it's got to be this house. It's got to be that place. It's got to be, you know, this car, that kind of stuff. You know, when you just, if you're just free with it, then you can, you know, receive mm -hmm. whatever it is, is for your highest and best, you know, that you really did speak, right? A hundred percent. I'm telling you, I, I have been, whoo, yeah. <laughs> so this year has been something because I have uh, my car, my Kia is 10 years old. It was 10 years old in May. 
my dad just called me and was like, well, how's your car doing? I was like, my car is good. I didn't have any major problems out of that car in those 10 years. So my husband was driving it to work and it stopped on the side of the highway. <laughs> so he called me, he's like, you know, baby, um, you know, stop, he, you know, I said, okay. So he called and so I went over there and I sat and waited for him about an hour for the guy to come and tow it. So we towed it to the dealership and the dealership called and said, hey, you know, we don't have time to look at it. You know, it'd be a few days. We're like, whatever, fine. So then they called back. I was at work. My husband called me and he said, you want good news or the bad news? I said, just give it all to me. So he said, well, the engine seized and they're going to call us back and let us know, you know, what we can do or what they can do or whatever, whatever. I said, okay. And right at that moment, I said, she's going to call us back and she's going to say, we're going to repair this car at no cost to you. <laughs> do you know that that is exactly what she said when she called back? <laughs> So we got a new engine, a new starter, and a new battery for the cost of the battery. That's amazing. <laughs> That's, amazing. That's manifestation. <laughs> it is. It is for sure. And, you know, I think uh, with manifestation, it could be that you speak the price, right? You, you say a statement just like that. Mm -hmm. But it could be when you say that your car is still good and runs like new, it's because it was meant for you to get a new one. So, you yes. know, sometimes the situations don't play out quite like we want. And it can be so easy to let the enemy make us feel defeated. What's the point yes. of speaking these things when I'm not given these blessings anyway? And I went through yes. steps using that. I'm sure you have been there too. Oh, yes. Girl, it's, yes. You know it. <laughs> and it's that decision to keep manifesting. Yes. Feel like it's not manifesting until yes. it does, if that makes yes. sense. Because oh, it's, yes. You because gotta, what happens, you start speaking that thing, right? And then you look around you see craziness around you. Oh, my God. You know, like, when I first started on this journey, I started speaking this thing. I got fired from my damn job. I had never been fired in my life. I've quit many jobs. <laughs> I'm not a person to just, I can't. Once they start getting annoying, I, I got to go. Yep. <laughs> you know? So I got fired and I was like, God, how does this work? <laughs> right. It's like, how does this work? But, you know, I learned a lot through all of that process. And that's when I knew I was like, okay, things need to fall away. Cause I didn't like that job anyway. Right. And I was actually looking for another one, but I didn't look fast enough. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, okay, you know, and then, then it was wild because I was out of work that time for like two months. Mm -hmm. And in that time, I have of course put many applications, just millions of applications. And so finally, after two months, <laughs> I got a part-time job that it was part-time because they didn't want to, you know, pay for benefits, mm -hmm. but I worked full-time hours, one of those. And then, uh, and then one of the jobs that I applied for that I was wanting and waiting for finally called me. I was like, okay, all right. But you know, in that middle section, you know, but in the middle, I think about it now, I still kept speaking. I still kept speaking, even though it looked crazy as shit. <laughs> And I still kept speaking. I was like, no, I'm not going to give up. Mm -hmm. You know, I was like, I'm not going to give up. I'm like Beyonce says, I'm a survivor. <laughs> I'm not going to give up. <laughs> I love it. Oh God, I'm telling you. So, journey. <laughs> <laughs> right? It is a journey. And that is, to me, that's like the greatest thing. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Because now I feel more relaxed on the journey because you know I don't it's nice to have all this anxiety and stuff about things you know especially you know being out there and it was just me at that time and I got married at 19 years old so I was used to always being married mm -hmm. you know and that was the thing you know and so um being out there all alone I was like oh my god you know I mean not alone but you know what I mean yeah. and so I said okay so what's next and that was kind of, you know, what brought me on this, this journey, this path, because I was like, something's, <laughs> I know I was called for a reason out here to do something for some reason for somebody, you know, <laughs> but okay, so this has been so much fun. Um, what I want you to do now is share how the people can connect with you. 
Sure. So I can be found on LinkedIn, uh, Allie Arney, A-L-L-I-A-R-N-E-Y. Uh, you can also find me on my website, buffalodiamondconsulting.com. Um, and you can email me at Allie, A-L-L-I, at buffalodiamondconsulting.com too, um, either for career services or just to chat a little bit about manifestation as well, because I'm always happy to be a resource if I can help share my journey in any way. And I hope that everyone yes. sees that this is not from a I'm not speaking today from a place of arrival. I still have a lot of, a lot left on my journey, but it's the things that have gotten me this far through some really tough life situations. And I know that those things can help you too. Um, and I just pray that everyone is able to look at themselves in the mirror today and speak an affirmation yes. and really claim a new future for themselves because there's a lot out there to go and get. Yes, absolutely. And that is the key. And sorry. I had the, the alarm on and I didn't want it to bring it. <laughs> so I was like, let me stop it now. Because <laughs> you see, this conversation is so amazing. We could go probably another hour. <laughs> okay. Very good spirits. <laughs> For sure. I'm like, oh my God, this has been amazing. So reach out to Allie if you are in need of those type of services because she's amazing, especially. Um, if you want HR consulting or even manifesting, correct? Correct. Yes. I'd be yes, happy. That is, oh, that's amazing. So um, I am super excited and so glad that you joined me today on Straight Out of Savannah because I have been, um, I think I follow you on LinkedIn. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I was trying to think, I was like, you know, I always wonder, you know, where people find me and stuff like that. Cause I try to post and say, you know, I have this show and I would love to interview people that are changing the planet and stuff like that. So, you know, I'm like, okay, where do, where do, where do, where do we meet? <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for finding me and connecting with me and allowing me to be on today because I really, yes. it. And you're, been you're, such a light. you're doing great work. I absolutely love this show and I have loved being with you so definitely this will not be our last connection because I enjoyed you <laughs> and I definitely want to come see that homestead when you get finished yes ma'am you've got it <laughs> we actually bought some land here like right when we moved right after we moved here we bought some land because we were like that's what we want to do I mean not quite to that extent I'm not interested in them to know <laughs> But I would like to have a garden, you know, a garden and a hot tub, you know, yeah. a, actually a spa pool, you know. You so, you know, those are my affirmations that I say, because I'm like, okay, yeah, I'm sitting in my house right now, you know. Yep. Time to go cool off. <laughs> yep. It's like, okay, this is, this is what it is. And here is not really that, that hot. It's actually, I think in the seventies or something like that. Okay. It's kind of beautiful. Yeah. But, um. Awesome. Yeah, because my husband goes, well, at least, you know, we're not roasting like the rest of the country. <laughs> very true. Very true. It's in the 90s here, so I will take Ooh. them any day. <laughs> oh, my God. I can only imagine. So what part of Tennessee are you? Uh, Nashville, Middle Tennessee. Oh, okay. So you're on the outskirts? Um, I'm just below, smack in, the da smack in the middle of the state, but the lower side of Nashville is where I'm at. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. All right, well, anyway, I have enjoyed this so much. This has been a blast. Woo! So is, is there anything that you are doing, like a program that you're filling or anything like that that you want to share? Um, stay tuned. <laughs> Those things are coming soon. Okay. Um, I, spoiler alert, we'll hopefully be finishing a course for um, some of my clients soon that'll help them um, transition through the confidence piece and manifest their own careers. So fingers crossed and stay tuned on that piece. Yes. <laughs> All right. That's what's up. That is what I'm talking about. So we're going to go, but thank you so much for joining us on Straight Out of Savannah. Allie Arnie, it's been my pleasure. I have had such a good time. <laughs> well, okay. you have a good one, Tammy. Yes, ma'am. Uh, thank you so much for hanging out with us listening to Straight Out of Savannah. This is Tammy Morrison, and my business Unleashing Your True Self can help you to move forward in your life. You see, I'm an intuitive healer, and I help people to shift their limiting beliefs so that they can become limitless. Join me in my masterclass on July 18th through the 20th 
Discovering You. It's at 7 p.m. Pacific time. I would love to see you there. We're going to cover chakras. We're going to cover sacred archetypes. We're going to cover spiritual gifts. We're going to cover affirmations and anything that relates to spiritual awakening. So if that is you and you are in that space, join me July 18th through the 20th at 7 p.m. Pacific time. Thank you so much. Bye. I know you've been blown away with the amazing value here today. Now go out and inspire the planet and be sure to send us a message when you're ready to come talk about it on Straight Outta Savannah, Talking with Tammy.